Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths. Yet another cram can tutorial, since I seem to do them every so often in the blue moon or so. So, for those of you who have watched the channel for a while, you will probably have noticed by now that I really like cram cannons in From the Depths. They just speak to me on a, uh, I was about to say spiritual level. Actually, yeah, let's go with that. Spiritual, mental, physical level, because they're big guns which go kablooey, and that's satisfying. And ever since the uh, big cram update, which I've just forgotten the name of, or forgotten the number of, rather, uh, I've been messing around with cram cannons to see what new things we can do with them. And it turns out there's quite a few new things you can do, and one of them is a new kind of Tetris. And I say new, you could do this before, but it just wouldn't work. And this is something I call a super crap Tetris. So, uh, to give you some idea of like how crap Tetris works, there is standard Tetris, which is the kind which pretty much, if you know how to use cramp cannons, that's pretty much the bog standard one you'd use. There is cramped Tetris, which is something I came up with some time ago, which is uh, not as good, but has a few niche uh, uses just for fun and giggles. And now there's the super crap version. So. Uh, before we get to shooting these uh, guns over here at the Marauder, who is uh, once again being our uh, lovely, uh, helpful target, uh, we're going to just go quickly go over these uh, kinds of Tetris. So, if we go here, this right here is the standard Tetris, which is, um, can you can also refer to it, or at least I also refer to it as Diamond Tetris, because uh, from the front, you've got the connectors arranged in a kind of diamond uh, pattern. And that's a, just a repeating pattern, there's like three blocks in between each connector. And uh, yeah, so this is generally speaking the most efficient uh, way to... I don't know, the, the balance, it's the right balance between being efficient and being straightforward to do. Because it is entirely possible to get um, at least six uh, loaders, or should I say packers, onto one pellet. Uh, but that does uh, change the dimensions of what you're doing a bit, so I generally don't do it, and it's usually not necessary. If you're getting at least uh, four uh, connections on each pellet, which means that you've got an order loader on uh, four sides of the pellet, in this case explosive pellets, uh, you're doing pretty good, and that works fairly well. And so you probably notice I have color-coded these, so it's a little bit easier to see. And with this particular arrangement, this is a, a setup for a 5x5 five five, uh, turret. Uh, not including turret armor. If I stuck armor uh, around a turret with this particular kind of Tetris, it would be a 7x7 turret. So in a 5x5 space, this is what you can get away with. And the reason uh, we're doing that, 5x5, uh, is because um, this is the best measure for this. Because uh, over here, the super crap Tetris uh, does not work in a 3x3 space. So this is where it starts uh, getting usable, if not great. So, if you actually go over here and you connect this and you stick a firing piece on it, you get a number of statistics. So you can look at that and see, okay, with this uh, 5 by 5 slice, so to speak, of cram tetris cake, uh, you've got a cram cannon at that at minimum gauge, 1000 millimeters, it reloads in about 15.5 seconds, It like for the standard packing of 250. And so I made some notes here, what this little uh, sandwich slice has in it, it has uh, four connectors, so four like uh, connectors in the cram, in the space. It has 12 loaders, uh, five pellets, and 20 loader pellet connections. So you'll see that uh, it's got five pellets, every single one is, got, uh, is connected on four sides, so that's 20. That is your main priority when making an efficient and decent cram cannon, is just to get as many of these connectors as possible in as tight a space as you can manage, because that way uh, the more connections you have, the faster the thing will pack, the faster it can fire, and the more you can add uh, payload compactors in order to get the payload capacity up a little bit while still having a decent reload. So, that's important. Uh, excuse me. So, 15.5 second reload, and last but not least, uh, the, uh, the cost of this particular slice of cram uh, cake, so to speak, is just over a thousand materials. So, that is the standard Tetris. Now, the cramped Tetris, or the crap Tetris, as I sometimes refer to it, 
the standard Tetris is kind of like diamond shaped in how it works. Uh, cramped Tetris is like, I'm like, I definitely am not the first one to come up with this. I guarantee you someone else has tried it before me. But it's square shaped, so you'll see the connectors being arranged in kind of square pattern. And this one is a little bit different. So if you do, if you. This one uses space a little bit differently. You'll notice it still has five pellets. And over here you see it's got uh, four connectors, 12 loaders, five pellets. This one has four connectors, 12 loaders, four pe No, it has five. What am I doing? Oh, my notes are terrible. So at first glance it looks very similar. But this is where, like, you know for sure that Cramp Tetris... Um, just for, the, just for the purpose of making a decent cram gun, it is inferior to the standard uh, diamond Tetris that you do because it only has 16 pellet loader connections. And that is because you'll notice that these loaders on the outside, uh, so there's eight of them, they on the pellets here are only connected to three order loaders, uh, whereas over here, all five pellets are surrounded by loaders. So that's uh, a few more connections. Uh, four more to be specific and so yeah so in a 5x5 five five space if you're going to make one cram cannon uh, this kind of Tetris loses out it costs exactly the same because it actually has pretty much the exact same yeah it, it does have the exact same amount of stuff 4, 12, 5 and 4, 12, 5 so why would you ever use this one over this one well it's just it is for ease of use and that is basically it uh, if you want to make a four-barreled cram turret in here, you have to do some kind of uh, shenanigan -y stuff. You need to do this kind of thing. So, here, let's see if I can just do this without even thinking about it. Uh, go here, and here. So, this is a very brief version of how to do this. And there we go. What the heck just happened? That's not right. Okay. And go here, here, and here, here, and here, here, and here, and it's not even on center. So, what I could do instead is this, this, and oh dear. And this, and what has happened? There we go, okay. So here we have a 4x4 cram, and you'll see it's kind of spaghetti junction in here with the connectors uh, for standard Tetris if, and this is important, if you want to make a 4 bell cram turret. And so, like, normally you wouldn't, by the way, it's just four barrels if you're wanting to be sensible, which clearly I am not, is about as many barrels as you actually want in a cram cannon because this game is, as you might have noticed, based around cubes. Like, four-sided things and turrets based around, like, uh, four of stuff uh, generally works better and is easier to make. So, however, it's very easy with a uh, cramped Tetris to get exactly uh, what you want. So, there, there, and there and there and there ta-da could even leave symmetry mode on it's just you notice that it's considerably less spaghetti when jamming multiple uh, cram firing pieces and just separate cram systems into one uh, turret space and this i do believe that all of these have exactly the same reload time which is another reason why you like having uh, even barrels is a good thing it's easier to do that uh, lousy reload time, but that's because they're all in one slice of cram pie, so to speak. Alright, so there you have uh, the principal advantage and pretty much the only real advantage of cramped uh, over standard Tetris. And now, finally, after about nine minutes, well done me, we get to uh, Super Crap Tetris. And this is attempt one, and you'll notice immediately this is awful. This is... This is a sign that if I saw someone else do this, I would, like, be facepalming so hard. Uh, but since it's me, uh, I must facepalm twice as hard. So this was my first attempt, uh, so to speak, at, like, super crap Tetris. And uh, so, the, the materials, the, this is terrible. So it's got 
Uh, remember, comparing to this, 4, 12, 5 connectors, loaders, pellets. It has 5 connectors, 7 loaders, 8 pellets. So it's got more pellets, less loaders, more connectors, less pellet loader connections, and that means it's got a 30.78 second reload, and it's more expensive. It is 300 materials more expensive, actually. And so what was I trying to do here? So, uh, if you think of the regular standard Tetris as being uh, diamonds of connectors, and you think of cramped as being squares, this is lines, so it's like alternating lines of connectors going back and forth. That's how I think of it. So the prefab slice you would do uh, for this, it looks something like this. This is what you'd start with, and you just line them up in alternating fashion. Uh, this is my first attempt, this is terrible, and so after doing a little bit of thinky think, I came up with uh, two other ones. And there's kind of actually... Uh, two variants on this super crap uh, Tetris. There is the what I call uh, the zigzag, which is this over here, which doesn't actually fit well into a um, into a three by three into a five by five space or any kind of turret space. Really, you need a lot of room for this. And you'll notice it's just um, it's this prefab pattern, but zigzagging back and forth like this. Which, as it turns out, is great for uh, guns which are fixed straightly to the hull and do not need to rotate inside a turret well, so that's convenient. And you'll notice that there's the, got these little gaps here. Uh, this is easily filled in with a just loaders, or packers, I really gotta start calling them packers. And there you go, that is a cram sandwich of a sort. It's not incredibly efficient. Like, you'll notice that uh, these autoloaders aren't really... I don't know, like, once you extend this a little bit, and particularly if you double up on it, you can get four-way connections for all the pellets, but it's not as efficient as doing it at the box standard way of the crown way. So why would you bother with this? Well, you'll notice that uh, it's got five connectors in here. So we're going on to the better version. This is the better version, and this is the other version. So we've got the zigzag over here. And then we've got the 1x5 spacing, so if I was to put another line in here uh, with an autoloader uh, here, so cool, whoop. if I was to continue this, it would look something like this. So I call this the 1-5 because in between, if you go one way, left or right, the connectors are one block away from each other with the autoloaders in between them. And if you go uh, forward and backward, there's one, two, three, four, five um, blocks in between each one. So, that's why I call it that. There's probably a better name for it. But, like, what is the advantage of this? What is the advantage? Well, it's actually got a better reload than this particular little setup. So, if you remember over here, standard Tetris, decent reload of 15.5. This actually is slightly better. It's a 15.15 second reload. It's got five, connect five connectors, nine loaders, seven pellets, so, e so actually more pellets than the other ones, 20 pellet loader connections, so actually just as many as the standard Tetris, but it is more expensive. So why would you bother with this? Well, the secret is the connectors, and for that we need to go over to our first turret over here, which has a kind of metal plate pattern on top because, I don't know, I felt like it. And you'll notice this is a 5x5 five five turret, in a 5x5 five five space. This is how I figured out this kind of Tetris, and this is where it is potentially useful in just jamming even more guns into an even smaller space. So, uh, cramped Tetris is that's what this is good for, and this is a more extreme version of that. And you can just stick a ridiculous amount of guns into a small space, and like you can just have more guns. Mainly for giggles. Simply because the way cram cannons work now, it's actually arguably better to have a single very strong cram cannon rather than multiple weaker ones. Simply because um, the more heavily packed a cram shell is, and not only does it do more damage, it also has higher health, so it can get through anti-munition systems a lot easier. So, like, spamming crams is mainly... it's mainly preference, and also... 
just if you want to saturate something with explosions or something like that, or if you want to mix and match ammo a little bit, so each cram does something a little bit different. But yeah, so that's kind of, this is mainly for giggles. That's how I found this, it's for giggles. So, it's the exact same Tetris uh, as what is over here, and I actually figured it out on the turret first, and you'll notice something interesting in here. So this um, little thing here, the pattern breaks, so it goes, um, it goes, uh, connector, packer, pellet, but over here it goes connector, packer, pellet, uh, packer, pellet again, and yeah, so the pattern, actually no, the pattern is kind of maintained, but uh, these, all, the only difference is where the uh, autoloaders connect, because, yeah, so it's just getting a little bit more efficiency, and when you line it up, so, the way I did it was like this, so, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, what the hell just happened? Okay. Pretty fab, pretty fab, that's not right. Crap, I've forgotten everything. And then you just have to make magic happen. Like so. And there, we have a 555 space. A little bit counterintuitive, like... This is actually the downside uh, to this particular kind of Tetris win compared to the original, to the cramped Tetris over here. Uh, cramped is very easy. Like, you can do that half asleep and you'll still get good results. Uh, with super crap Tetris, and yeah, that is a very, uh, <laughs> quite a, a self-deprecating name for it because, I don't know, it's not as good, it's just really fun. It's not as uh, straightforward, you kind of have to think a little bit, especially uh, once you start messing around with huge amounts of barrels. So yeah, that's basically how it goes, and uh, the result is actually not bad. Because all these guns have a very similar reload time. Uh, let's just um, see the Brawler's get day get slightly ruined. So, decent damage, not amazing, but it's just five explosive shells landing right on target. And that's very nice. So, we look at this, 13 second reload, uh, about 17 seconds, 12 seconds, about 13 again, and about 13 again. So, uh, that's another downside with this, is that these guns are not even. Like, you'll notice uh, back over here, uh, with our cramped, uh, all these have exactly the same reload time. Uh, which, for those of you who like to have your guns all fire at the same time, uh, that's definitely better for you. This is for people who don't actually mind and actually like a bit of staggered fire uh, with their cram cannons, which, I don't know, I kind of like it, but, um, yeah, if you don't like it, then <laughs> you should, like, this is not the cram tetris for you. So, yeah, but, um, as the cram tetris gets bigger, and for one thing, I am incredibly thankful that, like, the cram update has allowed this kind of thing, because... Back in the old days, you would need to have separate ammunition for every single cram, which these days is payload compactors. So, this kind of arrangement would not work uh, pre-cram update, uh, simply because there's nowhere to put the ammo, really. Like, if you put it uh, here, uh, that wouldn't work, because these two cram cannons are now sharing an ammo box, only one of them will get ammo. Same over here, same over here, same everywhere. So, like... This is this would not have been possible uh, back in the day. It's like only something that works now that the cramps have been overhauled to not actually need ammunition of their own. They just draw it straight from the ship, and payload compactors just well they add uh, extra payload uh, compactness, so to speak. And uh, so this basically means that you can jam an incredibly large amount of guns into a smaller space and not have to worry about them having individual ammo. Which is where we get to this, uh, 11 barrels of nonsense, uh, right here. So, uh, well, firstly, let's have this thing fire. It's slightly bigger, uh, 14, 15 millimeters, and yes, uh, the gauge snake in this is a tremendous pain in the arse. And kaboom, Marauder having a horrible day, and about 20 second packing on all of these. Uh, this is not an efficient cram cannon setup at all, simply because some of these guns get way more packing than others, 
they all reload at different times. It has this kind of staggered mess, which I quite like. And they all just land on target like that. And there's upsides to that. It does mean that you're more likely to hit the target if it's moving erratically because it also means that if they fire apart like that, if you have your aim point selection set to uh, changing targets every second, it's more likely to aim at a block it'll actually hit, which is nice. Nothing makes me more sad than watching an entire cram volley miss because they were aiming uh, at the stern or at the mast or at the superstructure or something. So. Let's get in here. What what is the Tetris in here? Well, it is the uh, one is the one five spacing. So there's here's an actual good representation of it because you see each connector going from right to left. It is one block away from each of its mates, and going forwards and backwards, it's one, two, three, four, five blocks away. And just the order loaders are just rotated uh, whenever they need to like be rotated to something useful. So. Uh, yeah, so that's basically how this works, and you'll notice that it does kind of alternate. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's still kind of zigzagging. And the great news with uh, once you get a bigger cram arrangement like this is that you're still getting four-way connections on most of the pellets. Not all of them. The ones on the outside here uh, only have two. This one only has three, which is um, not great. But, uh, like, sometimes, like, you have to compromise a little bit because there's not much you can do about that because all cram pellets are expensive. Like, arguably, uh, payload compactors are the best thing to stick on the outside here. However, uh, payload compactors also greatly increase the reload time of uh, your cram cannons. So, sticking them on the outside edge here, where the... And this is where I really need to show off what's happening in here. So this is that same Tetris in here, and you'll notice that each uh, cram has only got access to a small amount of loaders and to pellets. So this particular one right on the edge here, it um, in a horizontal slice that only has two uh, packers, or auto loaders, same thing, really should just refer to them as packers. It only has two packers in this vertical slice and three pellets. Which means its reload time is less than ideal. In fact, uh, this one, on the end, I've had to manually turn down the packing. So the minimum packing is at 50%. Because if I left it to its maximum, it would have a reload time of 41.07 seconds. Which is terrible. It is um, about twice as long as you actually want your cram cannon to be firing. I still think that about uh, once every 20 seconds is a good... Um, fire rate for cram cannons because it's the right balance between uh, having a powerful shell and firing often because firing too often is a bad thing because uh, lightly packed shells have almost no health at all and they get zapped by uh, laser anti-munition defense um, very very easily so you do want some decent packing in them so yeah but uh, to contrast the ones in the middle uh, have uh, access to a lot more pellets and a lot more uh, stuff. So you also see here the ones at the back here. Uh, more than one pillar of connectors is attached to them. And that is mostly for the sake of convenience. I could have uh, changed that, but I just wanted to go... Uh, with this one, I was a little bit restrained. Um, as I'll show you in a second, I was less restrained later. So what is the deal with this thing? Uh, the gauge thing is a bit of a mess, so there's no easy way of, um, if you're making cram cannons like this, of getting the gauges, like, all touching one and only one cram cannon. You basically just have to go in there and place them one by one and figure them out. However, gauge increased corners are your best friend, once again, for this kind of thing, because when you orientate them all facing the same way, uh, they only connect on two sides to other crams. So, uh, this one is not connected to that one, and, well, it's not connected to this one either, but that's okay because they're part of the same system. And in the middle, like, uh, you'll see there's some wacky stuff happening, and it's not entirely symmetrical. So you see over here is a surge, is a surge protector, and mirrored over there is a cram connector, so it, this is an asymmetric turret. And going up in here, you'll see uh, the way these things are right next to each other is what I showed off earlier. They're staggered in height, so this one pops up the middle here, 
and comes and connects to the back of the firing piece, whereas this one uh, comes straight up and connects to the bottom, and you know, and just goes back and forth, alternates. So back, bottom, back, bottom, back, bottom, back, bottom, and back. So that's the, the easiest way to get all your cram firing pieces nicely lined up like this. If you want that, the the barrels are quite fat, so they do clip with each other. But yeah, that's basically how you use this kind of super crap Tetris to get a lot of um, a lot of guns in one space. And there's eleven of these things uh, in a thirteen by thirteen turret, which is a lot, and you missed horribly. So we're just gonna blow something up uh, just for catharsis. So. Yeah, I must really must stress that this is something I found out while I was just messing around. And really, it's the kind of cram formation that is for giggles. Like, you could totally make it work on a craft. In fact, I plan to. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, very satisfying to watch. But if you really want to go super meta and hyper efficient and you cannot stay up at night... Uh, unless you get the most efficient cram cannon possible, uh, this is not what you want. <laughs> this is not what you want at all. So yeah, and we're going to fry this Jacob's... What is this called? Jacob's Folly. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's so nice. Wait, are you too damaged? Yeah, you're too damaged. So yeah, so after I built these two cam tarts, I said, okay, uh, how insane can I go? And so, the answer to that question is you can go uh, quite insane indeed. So let's spawn in our uh, jolly volunteer marauder again. And I will show you uh, just uh, what I was doing with my evening a few nights ago instead of doing something uh, productive. And that is uh, this absolute nightmare. So this is, uh, this is a lot of guns. Whoa, what the hell what just happened? There we go. Uh, this is 60 uh, cram cannons in a single turret. A 23 by 23 meter turret, which is big. It's also not hyper-efficient. Apologies to the people who, like, keep telling me to use more rounded turrets. Uh, I'm lazy sometimes, so this is kind of a diamond-shaped turret. But, yeah, so this is uh, 60 of them, and I did not even try to stick gauge increases in this, because there's a limit to what uh, mortal men uh, can do, and I was feeling particularly mortal when I built this. So, what is going on in here? So, this is the Tetris, and you'll be surprised to note that this is the zigzag. So, not the 1x5, one, one this is the zigzag because it's just got these connectors going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's a lot of them. And the reason I did this is just to get as many connectors in there as possible, uh, connection pillars, to get an absolutely ridiculous uh, number of firing pieces on it. And you will notice that I should have painted this rather. You're still getting four-way connections on the pellets, and you'll notice these are frag pellets uh, because. I was messing around with this thing, and, uh, frag crams are... Jeez, that's loud. I am now deaf. Uh, frag crams are amazing. So, if you want to have a closer look at uh, this madness, uh, this is it. Uh, that is a lot of madness. That might very well be the thumbnail. Or not! And, uh, Marauder probably won't survive this. AI dead? Yep. Uh, yeah. So, um... That's what 60 uh, 1,000mm uh, frag guns uh, do all at once. But, of course, uh, this thing, these things do not have a proper reload. A proper reload. Uh, they all have slightly different reloads. So, going there, 13, 20, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13. Most of them are 13. But then this one's 7 or so, 13, 6, uh, 6, uh, 7. And over here is 13, and over here is 13, 13, 13, 13. Most of them are 13.42. Whoop, there's... Where were, you? Where were you? Oh, here you are. That's uh, about 10 seconds. That's 13.42, 13. Whoop, there's one. There's 23.83. 
and whoop, there's 8.21, whoop, there's 7.63, and there's 23.83, and there's uh, all that stuff, and there's 9.94. So, like, and I will admit the front of this looks kind of ugly, there were compromises that had to be made in here. So, also, this is quite space inefficient, so if you look here, you'll notice there's surge protectors here, there, and everywhere, because uh, there's gaps in this. There's gaps. It is inefficient, and ideally there would be something in there, like a loader, a pellet, or a connector, but just nothing would fit in there while still maintaining this turret shape, and that's another reason to get a rounder turret, because if I did have a rounder turret, um, like, there would be more room for stuff in here. But I don't, so instead there's surge protectors. So yeah, not hyper-efficient, very giggly, lots of wasted space in here. In fact, the inside of this thing is hollow. So you'll notice there's lots of hollow space in here. Just to save on a bit of weight, I haven't even covered this, jeez. Just to save on a bit of weight and cost and block count, and also because I was feeling kind of lazy when I was making this. But thankfully, I have color-coded all of these things, so red and green. And so, if you follow the red, it just snakes up like this, and it's the exact same spacing as before. Kind of. So, this one connects from the bottom, this one connects from the back, bottom, back, bottom, back, bottom, back. But then, on top, this one connects from the top, this one connects from the back, this one connects from the top. And then up here, it's uh, from the back, from the back, from the back, from the back. Just a line of things that only connect from the back. And then up here, it's just um, things that connect... Oh, no. Oh, no, this connects from the top. That's good. I thought I'd made a mistake. And so, yeah, that's a handy hint for this, is that if you're making something really big and complicated like this, uh, color coding what you're doing is a very, very good idea. It's just, it's, it'll make your life so much easier. Let's shoot at something bigger. Let's shoot at a crossbones, because crossbones are fun. Crossbones are... Oh, you missed! This is a good opportunity to show off um, how these things all fire at different rates. So, yep, there's one. Individually, none of these shells are very powerful. And I should probably... Next crime tutorial I should do should be on so-called uh, Doom Crabs. Which are just as big as this, except it's just one firing piece. And this is why a cram frag is great, because uh, you stick a time fuse on them, even if they miss by a country mile, uh, they still tend to knock blocks off. Especially if it's high gauge. And uh, yeah, just uh, against something that's mostly made of wood, it's um, it works quite nicely. That is beautiful, beautiful block confetti. And the crossbones is having a horrible, horrible day. And... Just, there's, there's a lot more freedom with crams. Frag cram is good. The AP cram is very good. HE cram is good. EMP is good. It's just, it's all good, man. It's all really, really good. And see, once that initial uh, mega volley it gets fired, it gets these kind of little staggered smaller volleys, and then uh, all those guns which fire at the same rate, they all let loose at once, and they make a huge mess. So, yeah. But that is not all, so you think that'll be the end of the video with, um, uh... Like, just just with a 60-gun uh, cram turret, well, how do I cop that? Well, by, by telling you something that's actually useful. So, those of you who are awake and paying attention, which I hope you all are, I hope you haven't uh, fallen asleep to the soothing sound of my voice and also 1,000mm guns firing, um... You would remember that I mentioned this is quite handy for uh, guns fixed to the hull, which is exactly what mortars and broadsiders uh, tend to be. So, right here, we have a mortar arrangement, which is the 1x5, um, what do you call it? The 1x5 setup. So, oh goodness, let's delete the mortar for a second so this gets out of the water. So this is the Tetris of this, and it's 1x5, except it's not 5. It's fact, and in fact, it's a kind of a, it's a kind of weird, it's kind of zigzag and also the 1x5 spacing, because it's still a super crap Tetris, because it is on a line, you're thinking in lines for this, and it is got that kind of alternating zigzag field with all the components, uh, but um, 
It's like, it's not deep enough uh, to have that full five blocks in between each connector. And uh, it's very space efficient because there's room for gauge increases in this. And this is uh, one of the advantages of making hull mounted guns, is that you don't have to fit it into a shape that can rotate fully within a turret well. So, that's where these mortars come in handy because it is exactly, it's about five by 34, or was it 35 uh, meters? And you can just very easily... Look, this is 35 guns. 35, and there's a lot of them, and they all have decent reload time, and they all have this lovely, efficient uh, alternating pattern, which means you can also uh, stick the weapon controllers in there, you can stick the fusing boxes in there. Uh, the fuses on these crams, by the way, uh, all the others were inertial and timed fuse. Uh, these are inertial and low altitude, because that, I find, works really well for mortars, because it's just if they land near the target, and as soon as they dip below the surface of the ocean, or just above it, they explode, and they're not blocks off, hopefully. Uh, mortars are literally hit and miss, so this is not my best work. There's, you'll notice that uh, there's a lot of recoil barrels on it, just to reduce the velocity. Uh, setting it too high is a bad idea, because then it just takes too long to fall back down again. Uh, the sweet spot seems to be between 100 to 140 meters per second, and we do need a slow thing uh, to demonstrate that. So we need a thing that is nice and uh, fat and also slow. So hopefully something that doesn't have a good lamb system. Need a fat thing. Uh, fat thing, fat thing, fat thing. Nothing's fat anymore. Eh, let's go with the Huskal. Hopefully the Huskal doesn't cause my PC to lag into oblivion. And hopefully the Huskal isn't too fast. Yeah, I think you're fat enough. I haven't looked at the Huskal in a long time. Yeah, first volley it tends to always miss, by the way. This is Akari's work, by the way. You can tell, Hick 9000. And is that water? There's no way that's going to hit. I'll be very surprised if that hits. Uh, that's not going to hit at all. Wow, that's a lot closer than I thought. Yeah, this thing is... This is actually perfect. This thing's very slow. It's also falling over. Come on. Oh, dear. Oh dear, recoil is real. Oh yeah, no lambs on this thing. There we go, there's one hit, and there's a few more. And there is a big volley uh, coming in right now. So, we... Oh, that felt good. That felt so good. Cram mortars are amazing against anything that is too slow or stupid to evade them. And uh, this kind of uh, super crap Tetris is actually pretty good for getting a lot of them into a tight space. Because previously when I was making cram mortars I always had this kind of problem of like leaving gaps uh, in them. But now uh, that's not a problem. It's all one nice continuous thing alternating uh, little cram things. I could have phrased that a lot better. Okay, one more, one more hit. Come on, you got this. Yes! And one more. Since it's in the air already. Wow, we blew this thing's arse off. And that'll do. I could, wow, like the Huskarl is so much fun to shoot at. So, after I built this, I thought, hang on, hang on, this would work for broadsiders as well, so. Go here, go here, and Broadsider. So this is the exact same uh, cram configuration. It's just mounted, uh, it's just leaning forward a little bit. So you see here, it's the exact same uh, cram Tetris. It's just tilted forward, and now it's a fixed broadside. So let's spawn in, yeah, let's spawn in the Huskarl again, simply because we've just learned it's so much fun to shoot at it. Go here, and this is again 35 cram cannons. Uh, first volley missed. That's a shame. And uh, as before, the one downside to this is that um, 
it is probably more expensive uh, and more less material slash power efficient uh, per volume. And also, there's it's kind of difficult to make them all fire at the same rate. Although you can, jeez, that's loud. You can, ugh, you can have uh, set that on the local weapon controller, which is quite nice. And we just uh, ruined this thing's wow. Fire again. See if we can knock this thing over. Kaboom. Kaboom. And kaboom. Excellent. Looks like our broadside's better than yours. I did not put uh, timed fuses on those. But that's okay, because it's very satisfying. And then, and here is where... I guess, like, and the reason I'm finishing the video off with this next one is simply because uh, it's max gauge. And uh, you gotta love that. So, going here. Once again, the exact same setup uh, in a derp turret. So this turret is actually a little bit smaller overall. Look at this thing. It's silly. Alright, so unlike the other uh, very big derpy turret that I showed you before, uh, this is only 35 guns. Only 35 guns. Uh, but they're max gauge. They are 2,000 millimeters. And exact same Tetris as before. Very neat, very tidy, very compact. All in this, uh, what is basically a deck gun, except for this little uh, stick that's below deck, uh, just so the local weapon controller can be nice and protected. This thing is ridiculous. I don't think I would ever use this on a ship, simply because uh, there's only two layers of metal uh, in between the harsh, cold outside world and some very important uh, squishy internal bits. So, this could work. But I, if you actually want to be practical about this, I would not uh, make it this big. I do believe that... Uh, did I stick time fuses on this? I did not. But uh, if you do want to stick time fuses on that, I recommend uh, you can just replace... Um, make it one uh, meter longer, this whole uh, cram thing, and stick them on the end like that. I didn't bother to do that for reasons, and now, of course, we must shoot at a tier. Or tur, I forget. Because, um, 35 uh, 2,000 millimeter crams all at once? Ow! My ears. Uh, that's, uh, it's hard to stop. It's, uh, very hard to stop, so. And of course, they all fire at slightly different rates, and uh, it doesn't matter how good your lambs is. Well, it does, actually. But it's a pretty meaty lambs that can deal with, uh, 34... 35 uh, max gauge crams all at once even if they're just filled with high explosive and if it, I made this thing a frag gun it would actually be even stronger because at higher gauges uh, crams now do better as frag guns than as HE Whee! and the tier is pretty heavily armored as well it's like multiple layers of metal and alloy and heavy armor and uh, we've already knocked 3% of its health off Go on, you can blow it in half. I believe in you. Wee. It's the kind of explosions that uh, cause the game to lag. It also cause uh, just the universe to not keep up with how many explosions there are. Come on, one more, one more. Loving this, loving this, and. You gotta hand it to whoever made the most recent iteration of the turret. The turrets, uh, the main guns at the very least, are not easy to pop off. Like, fun fact, you look in here, uh, heavy armor, but only on the front. So, it's nice and, uh, nice and compact. It's, uh, not as heavy as it uh, would be if you made it entirely heavy armor. But yeah, very hard to pop off. I say very hard. If you've got, um... A ridiculous derp turret like I do, and the superstructure just uh, vanished. Let's see if we can't blow this thing in half and completely. Did I mention I'm having fun with the new cram cannons? I am definitely having fun with the new cram cannons, and 
There goes the bow of the ship. Or bow. Bow? Bow? I don't know. So yeah, that's, um, that is super crap Tetris, so... Basically, it's, it is to, it is got the only virtue of jamming a huge amount of guns into a tighter space than you, wow, we just knocked the superstructure off. Uh, jamming a huge amount of guns into a smaller space that you would be able to manage uh, with standard Tetris or even cramped Tetris. However, it's not as efficient as standard Tetris and it's not as easy to use as cramped. So, it's not the be-all and end-all. This is not an I win automatically a technique. We are really ruining this tier's day. And this is this is just plain old HE. And uh, none of those crams have extra payload compactors or anything like that. It's just lots of them. On a single turret. Yeah, and just massed volleys like this, they just melt off blocks like no one's business uh, in case you're wondering how expensive this thing is it's uh it's uh it is expensive so we go here placeholder save over it's um yeah <laughs> it, it whoops okay you need to stop that for a second it is a uh, 285,441 materials, uh, which is more expensive than most of my ships, I have to say. Like, um, there's a certain tournament uh, that uh, goes around where the usual limit uh, for ships is around 200 to 250,000 uh, materials. Uh, that turret alone uh, would almost be too expensive to enter. Wow, we missed some fun over here. So yeah, crams are expensive now. And I really should have stuck time fuses on those things. How often do you get to look down on a tier and see the guts of it? Uh, not often, I would say. Not often at all. Mm -mm -mm. And kabloom. Come on, one more. This thing is going to sink if it takes any more. Oh, hello, you want to really take the bow off. No, you don't. You want to uh, smash that turret in the face. Uh, I'm rambling now. I'm just... Did I mention I'm enjoying this? It's uh, pretty cathartic. So, if you want to get good with cram cannons, like, I actually do suggest um, uh, learning... Oh, oh, we just, we just did it. That, uh... Did we just do it? We just fried something. Oh, we fried that turret. Alright, so I do recommend uh, learning the Tetris in the order I kind of showed it at the start. So, standard Tetris is most important to learn, because that's the one that actually works the best, uh, most consistently. And uh, then Cramped, because that's, uh, like, something you can do for giggles. And then this one, which you can do for extreme amounts of giggles. Like, I'm not giggling right now, but I assure you I'm giggling on the inside. We And good night, Arvin. So, we're gonna leave it right there. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something, hope you've got a new fun thing to do with cram cannons on uh, your Sunday afternoons with From the Depths. So thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell. Wait for it. There we go.